okay vlog. Last day in Tokyo. I'm leaving now. Just packing up my last few bits. I really need to leave before now because it's currently 8.45 and my plan was, because I missed the Imperial Palace yesterday, to have a quick look at it before my bus departs to the station. Yes, can we just say that I caught a bus that takes me so much longer to save $12 and yet I bought the Burberry cab yesterday? I don't know. Like, I, honestly, my like, financial sense just doesn't make a whole lot of it. Um, but I'm going to get out of here now so that I can be on my way to the station. <sighs> Fun. So, goodbye Tokyo. It's been real. Goodbye Airbnb shitty little bathroom. Goodbye room. Goodbye. It's like, night kids. Goodbye little dog. Anyway, I'm Kate. I'm gonna go. Love you. Stay gorgeous. Bye. Honestly, I don't think we're gonna have time to get the Imperial oh, Palace yeah. now. Because my bus departs at 9.40 and that's when I'm going to get to the station. Okay. So I'll get there at 11 and then my um, flight leaves at 1.10. So moving so on my case. Um, yeah, so I'm definitely not gonna get a chance to go to um, the Imperial Palace. I was literally just gonna have a look and then leave. Oh, I love that there's just another LV inside there. The train station, just what you need. An LV in every train station. It kind of reduces some of the exclusivity though, to my every train station. Um, but yeah, no, I thought I was going to have time, but it's now nearly 25 past and my bus leaves at 22. So I've got like 15 minutes, which isn't the best. So I'm just going to get to my bus and then that can be my regret for the trip, but apparently it's not that great anyway. But I saw the rest of Tokyo. Look at this. I've not exactly missed out, really. So I'm not too pressed, you know what I mean? Okay, so even though it's a bus, this is way better fun than my literally another bus I've been on. That's why I'm not. I don't know why I thought this was going to be half assed because it's Tokyo after all. Like, even a USB mouse. I've actually got four minutes until my counter opens because my bus arrived here. Like, that bus was so much more seamless than I was imagining. Like, it was so loud. I love it so much. I actually just love Tokyo. This has been like so stress free. I'm at my airport, I'm relaxed. Like, not a problem. I'm looking for the toilets. Okay, so I just went and returned my Suka card, um, which is worth doing because I had my $500 deposit and then like 400 yen on it. So she told me to go spend the rest of it and I did. I bought some chocolate. Um, I just got like 500 yen back, so basically it's cost me 17 yen was what I had left. So it's cost me like, like literally like a cent, two cents, like, um, it's cost me like maybe three cents to have a suka, which is really good. It was kind of a cool like memento because I had my name on it, but I'm trying not to accumulate. I don't have too much on this trip, especially from five stops. I don't want five like subway cards but I've just had to cram everything into my backpack like shove it all in push it all in because my airline's looking like it's got a very strict like one carry on only kind of vibe so then that way I've just got my case and especially because my case is overweight and I know it is I don't want to piss them off even more they might like let me get away with one thing but it's kind of unlikely to let me get away with both Okay, so I had to pay 3,400 yen, which is like $43 for a weight baggage. But I was fairly certain I was gonna have to. And all the flights I booked, all, you couldn't book like baggage cheaper. It was gonna be this incredible rain, where it's like $10 a kilo or whatever. Um, but then, so it actually worked out where it was like, even with the full service airline, which were the only ones where you could get pay for more than 15 before the flight, it was gonna be like double the price. So I still saved money and it just is what it is. So I'm not actually mad about that at all. I'm just about to go through security and then, cool.
So that was pretty seamless. I probably would have had time to do the Imperial Palace, but I don't regret not doing it because there's nothing worse than being in a foreign country and not knowing how long it's going to take like, to the airport. Because um, sometimes airports have the longest queues, but luckily this one wasn't today. Um, literally got through security in like five seconds. It was like, oh no. Okay. Exactly. Gotta go. Only in Tokyo do you come through security and you've got Gucci, Hermes, Cartier, Bugatti. Like, literally, the minute you leave security, it's like, buy a love bracelet. Like, okay, cool. Maybe I will. No, I won't. Definitely won't. Burberry, no way, Like, honestly. I swear to God. Look at Tokyo. It's crazy. Hermes, Ferragamo, again, no one cares. A Tiffany. <laughs> Okay, this was so seamless. I literally think I'm too used to like English airports. Australians aren't even that bad, but English airports are so bad that I think I was like prepping for worse than it really is. This is so seamless. I really do want to go buy some designer shirt, but I'm not going to. I don't need it and I'm not going to buy it. Just notice my shoe. <laughs> That's like actually traumatizing. These are my favorite pair of shoes ever. They're so comfy too. And like, see whether I can get them fixed in sole. It's like these are, so, I love these shoes so much. So they're quite heavy, so I'll be annoyed if I'm like, like they're broken and I'm traveling them around with them when I don't need to. Damn! Oh my god, that's literally so sad. Oh my god. Now I need to go eat something to eat. Go eat something to eat. Go have something to eat. Okay, so I've actually done quite well. So, all I've got left in Japanese currency is 53 yen, which is like 65, 70 cents. Um, I just ordered some food. I got a wagyu beef ball because I've tried curry here. I've tried the noodles here a few times. I have, I've done all that. I've just not tried um, any of the wagyu beef, which is like Japan's famous for it. So I decided to do that. And I was looking for something which would mean I wouldn't have to spend anything on my card because I want to use it for my cash. So I've done really well. I traded my Suka card and then, so I got some chocolate for that and then the balance of that has helped pay for this. So it's actually worked more seamless than you could like picture 53. I'll just drop that money in like, um, you know how they have like charity donation things? I'll just drop that in there. And then it means that I've not, I don't come home with like heaps of random currency or like $10 in this and $20 in this and I've got to convert it and like it's just something I don't really want to deal with when I'm um, get back and also as a minimalist, not that I'm minimalist, I don't, I didn't want to keep my super card, it was cute, I took a picture of it but I don't need the actual thing and I'd much rather have 500 yen which pays for my dinner which has meant that I've not had to spend anything else on my card and then I'm just not accumulating anything, I'm not keeping any currency which is just kind of like a nice thing to do. Like, look, I love Japan. I liked the currency. I liked being in Japan. I don't need to keep the currency and that's fine. So that's worked really well. I'm shocked by how seamless this has been. This whole process in the airport has been so fast and I totally would have had time to go to the Imperial Palace now if I'd have known, like very quickly, but I could have done it. But I don't regret it because apparently it wasn't the best. But, and you can't really go in. You have to do like a tour to do to even see the palace grounds but the gardens for example apparently they're not even that great and I'm glad like I wish I'd done it a few days ago when it was open but I didn't realize it wasn't open Mondays but then now I'm like if I'd have gone this morning and tried to and then got into the airport and been stressed out about oh, I've got to get to the airport and what if I don't get in and what like oh, what if there's a huge queue and then immigration and customs and all that I'd be so stressed out whereas I walk through and I'm relaxed and I've got 40 minutes till I board, like, so I've got like an hour till I board. Um, so like that's really cool, like this has worked so well, like really well, like I'm, I'm really happy. I just, I wish I'd managed to get my friend a snow blow. I've looked in the duty free shops, oh, but I did see one, but it was $30 and I love you so much Caitlin, but it was like $30 for the ugliest fucking snow globe because it was like a pen holder too. It was like a shitty little snow globe with a... I was like, that's not what she's going for, a pen holder snow globe. And it's like $30. I'm like, that's crazy. Like, I'll get you one from Korea, Caitlin. Like, I love you so much. But like, um... <laughs> I, I like, feel very accomplished with Japan. 
traveling alone is a vibe. Also, this coat really does suit me. Like, I'm so glad I bought it. Like, the sleeve length is like the most bitchy, like, gay boy that's wearing it, like, on purpose. Like, you know, like, what a vibe. Wow, that looks advertising. Not. Especially for, like, $14, which I guess is a bad grab of food. Um, I did also want some bring tea here. And then to get the cake one, but that's fine. Not a problem. That's gross. I'm not gonna eat. End of the walk. The head. Oh, I get it. They're painting me out to be a bad guy. Well, it's the last time a bad guy gonna do the rap game like this. It's so weird how quickly you get used to just traveling. Like, to Tokyo, I booked my train. I got everything sorted. Yes, it was a long flight, so I kind of needed to. Um, and then on the way back, I, I booked my bus last night at like 12.30 this morning because I was like, I should probably do that so I can decide because I hadn't decided how I was getting to the airport and now I'm not sure how I'm going to get from Seoul airport to um, the city from Incheon to the city but I'm going to figure it out when I get there there's a train and I think I might catch that but I've like not done any research I don't really know what I'm doing it's about $11 for the non-stop one I think so but it's weird because like you would have never been able to convince me that I would just be so like whatever about that but now I literally I'm like whatever I'll figure out when I get to Seoul also because I'm there at four o'clock it's still daytime so it's all right but I'm gonna be traveling in peak rush hour which is the worst but hopefully it should be pretty quick to get through Seoul this is my gate but we've not started boarding yet so apparently our Seoul's always late so it is what it is let's go to Seoul Keen. where's my train bloody business from? Is that like I knew how to say hello and thank you in Japan I don't know one Korean word <laughs> I've got two Korean friends and I don't know one Korean word I should have got Glenda or Jen to tell me how to say something before I left I've like downloaded them in the Google Translate app but I've not had a chance to try to learn them yet so <laughs> wish me luck in a foreign country and don't know one word of the language and I don't have a cent of currency I've got 60 cents in Japanese currency and I've not got any South Korean one, so fun. What are you gonna do? It's good fun. Go mad to do dinner. No, I'm getting this airport. It's so big, it's one of those ones you've got to catch a shuttle to the other side of the airport. Yay! Oh, it's like Now let's leave. Welcome to Seoul. How exciting. I think I really need to start getting cash before I get here, even though we're taking exchange rate here. Because it's probably not the smartest idea to be an international current country with absolutely no currency. That's what I was trying to say. Having no currency, being in an international country alone is not the smartest idea. However, I don't like to pay greedy companies that are ongoing. Um, greedy companies like a large percentage of my um, commission. Ok, 
okay, so I had to get cash out of the airport, and I took like a six dollar exchange rate here, and because they had to pay a fee in that, which is just like bullshit, because all the machines only accepted cash. If they accepted cash, you had to spend a minimum of like fifty dollars equivalent, and it's actually ten dollars for my express train from here to Tokyo Station and then to Niangong. So like that's kind of annoying, like whatever. Um, but I'm on it now, I've got like 15 minutes to wait in the train. I'm used to Tokyo trains which come in like 3 minutes and this is traumatising me a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to go pick up a card in Tokyo Station, which is pretty cool. Fun. I'm actually not used to waiting for a train, it's ridiculous. Okay, that's really good though. So that's like a dollar, that's like a dollar twenty. Like, you, we're, I'm at an airport, like that's a really good price. Like, so good. However, cool, you can get like a drink for $1.20, but I had to pay $7 in agent fees. Still mad about it. That was stressful. They've got like a luggage space, but it's actually enough luggage for like six seats, and there's this entire carriage whose luggage is meant to fit in that. And this is too big for my luggage, so I had to literally just force it in. Like, but there's nothing else I can do, there's like nowhere else to put it. It's not like got racks. Kind of annoying as hell, but that's alright. I'm really out here in Korea. Like, I'm looking out the window and I'm looking at like Korean, and I kind of this trip is so surreal, so liberating to just do whatever the hell you want and like go to Korea. This is an oyster, honestly. Like, I'm sick of seeing people like talking shit about life. Awful things happen all the time. So much happens in my life is atrocious that I could tell you about and you'd be like, I mean, not as bad as some people, like, I've never gotten raped or anything, but, like, um, it's awful things happen to me. But, like, you've got to find the good, you've got to do things you enjoy, and, like, life is magical, and you've got to enjoy it, and do crazy shit rather than being like, mm, about the whole thing, you know what I mean? <laughs> So lots of walking, we're going up escalators, you've got to walk downstairs to get to the train from the airport, which seems like a bad planning to me. Like if you're making people with paces different, it's not Like that was literally busier than any, you can't even see it, I guess it's not too bad now, but it's literally busier than any train that's going to like I look, couldn't move and so I'm getting off here and oh, Korea, you joking me? First, from the express train line you make us go so many stairs and then same here too, like what is with this? Where are your escalators? Like, what the fuck? Like, I'm actually kind of... We don't stand here. Uh, salt, nearly as much as... Okay, I'm gonna get stuck in the Okay, I don't already love salt that much directions on Google Maps because some Korean wall I go the thing and I just walked one way instead of crossing that way so I'm going to have to walk across the road down this way it just seems like a bit repaired where's the where is the crossing is there just not one the fuck Korea like literally this is a joke I know I just came from like the best city in the world for transit but the fact that in a very main section, probably one of the touristy areas, you don't even have a crossing in one direction. Just wasn't shit. But anyway, I'm in Korea. So, it's a vibe. And it's very beautiful again, so... I'm not in a bad mood, I'm just cold and annoyed that the crossings rarely exist, which is a bit of a joke. That's alright. Okay, it's actually really, really cold. I'm going to eat something after a check in and then go to bed and do it in the daytime because it's not like Tokyo where you can walk around all night because it's warm, it's cold. I'm so glad I bought a scarf if I had an American fire in here. So that's good. And like the pavement is just like, I know everything in 
everything in Tokyo was just done right and like successfully and like the driller is fine and everything. This feels a lot more like an Australian or an English city in the sense that some stuff that just aren't perfect, whereas like Tokyo everything was just perfect and just was what it was. I'll talk about the culture in a second. Well the lift is nice. Some lovely Korean man helped me find it. Because I was like clearly I was looking lost and he came over to help. What a nice guy. I think it might have been a security guard or a police officer, I'm not sure. Oh, no. That was a bit of a process. Oh, it's quite nice though. I'm already, I already do enjoy it. Oh, I love this door lock. I'm such a fucking loser. Airbnb tour. So when you come in, you've got like the Japanese thing where you take your shoes off, which I do enjoy. And your little shoe things. You've got your bathroom shoes. You've got the Japanese toilet that I didn't even have in Japan. Cute little bathroom. It's actually really nice, this place. And then some storage, but I'm, I guess I could open it for you. What the fuck? It's all that anyway. And then cute, 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 cute. So you've got like everything here. I don't know where the fridge is. There's got to be fridges as well, but that's... I mean it's kind of messy, but that's alright. That's still stunning. Is there not a fridge? I mean, I wasn't really going to put anything in the fridge, but it just seems rather peculiar to me. No, I bet one of these is the fridge. Yeah, it's the fridge. Okay, I'm guessing this is the freezer. I was thinking that was proper weird. Um, but that's it. You've got some storage compartments. You've got this little thing. You've got two beds. Just what I need. Okay, like... Oh, we love a drain grab connected to the outside world. That could have been such a cute little mini balcony. I don't know why they waste down there. And then window to look down. Now that was kind of a joke to gain. So already there's a few things about Korea that I'm like not living for. And I know I've been very spoiled in Japan. But like um it's just not done as well as it should be, like, and I know it's not as touristy as Japan's, but it hasn't need to get to it yet, and it's not quite as big as Tokyo, so for their population it doesn't quite need to be, but like, I want to say Tokyo is like 14 million people, and Seoul is like 9 million people, and I don't know, I feel like that's not that much smaller, but the subway system just feels clunky, and then the fact that you get, get off at the airport, the airport's really nice, but it's like, it's really nice and like a really spacious, large, but not well done. It's like modern, but not well done. And then you get off there and then you've got the express train or the non-express train. And I did the express train, so I didn't have 12 stops. But that one only runs every half an hour, so I had to wait half an hour for a train. And I was saying to my dad, like, I was in Tokyo for an entire week. And in the entire week in Tokyo, I didn't, like wait as long as I had to wait for the one train. Like, the entire time I was in Tokyo, over the seven days, in total time waiting for trains, seven days, at least three trains a day for 21 trains, because I, most of the time, would walk around to them. I waited longer for that one train in Korea. And like, look, I get it, it's an express train, so it's like, not as many people catch it. And it didn't really need to go that much more often, but I think if it went more often, more people would take it. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. And it's really cheap though, that's one thing that's good. It's like $11, $12, whereas, yeah, like $13. Whereas like in Tokyo, it's like $30 to catch like the Narita Express and stuff, which is expensive. But then the all stop one is literally like $5 from the airport. So that's like so good. Everything in Korea seems relatively cheap to me so far. Like the vending machines having $1 water in there, but that's crazy. But then like, it's crazy to me because like then you arrive and the airport's just clunky and like the ATMs for example I had to get money out of the an airport which I refused to do because they charge you like dumb exchange rates and I was saying earlier that I got charged like it worked out to be like seven dollars more six dollars more for like a hundred dollars um oh well so I got a hundred thousand one out which is like a hundred and twenty five dollars or a hundred and twenty three and I paid a hundred and thirty and I like flat out refused to withdraw cash from like 
F at ATMs unless they're like really good and don't charge out for crazy fees. But then you had to because the card, like the ticket machines didn't accept card unless you spent enough or they just didn't at all. Um, but it was just like really quite clunky. And like as well, this isn't my Airbnb's fault, but Google Maps is not allowed to have walking directions. I was saying earlier because some career war so that the enemy can't, I don't know, some bullshit. But like it makes it a nightmare to find where you're staying and I put in the destination of this and Google Maps thinks it's right the way down that street. So I'd done a walk, I'd walked all the way from Myeongdong station because I'd selected that one instead of Cheongdong because I was like, oh cool, it's like in the middle of the town. But it wasn't, it's like really close to Cheongdong on this main street. So I'd walked through all these back streets with my fucking luggage and done all this because the addresses aren't right in there. And yeah, like the pavement and stuff just isn't as like lit as Tokyo. And it's still like a really big city, Seoul. And like the two busiest areas are Gangnam and um, Myeongdong, where I'm in, really, for tourists anyway. Um, it's kind of where the two places people choose to stay most of the time. So it amazes me that even the touristy areas aren't like this. And now maybe, look, I'll go into Gangnam tomorrow and be like, this is amazing, iconic, incredible. But like, so far I'm like a little bit underwhelmed. And also just like, I really get a vibe of the sense of culture and people like immediately and the way people treat other people and the way people like do all that and obviously I know Japanese people are the cures of the world like every Japanese person cues like a mofo but and that's really good I'm English I love curing Korea like just don't just like literally just like they queue but then people cut in and then people won't do anything about it and then like just don't respect each other enough and then like You'll go on a, you'll be halfway through like a zebra crossing and then cars will cross. Whereas that would never happen in Japan because people just respect one another a little bit more. And it's kind of like, Korea is a lot more aligned to what I'm used to. Like that kind of selfish attitude. It's very a lot more English and Australian. So I shouldn't be shocked to it because it's what I'm used to. But I've just come from a city that was really well developed and how we should treat other people. And it's sad to me that I've only gone from that back to like an English speaking country basically in terms of how we treat other people. Like, I mean, there's just like a sen an like overall aura. Like I didn't feel unsafe for one second in Tokyo the entire time I was there for a week, even down back streets late at night, whatever. And the minute I got off the train station, you know, I was like, it's just like not, I don't feel as secure. I feel like anyone can travel to Japan. I legitimately feel like you can travel to Japan. Like you watch it, you could be 16 and travel to Japan. The people love lay. Most people can't speak English, but they can just about get by. And they don't get annoyed that you can't speak Korean. And like the trains and everything is just really well done. And like, like I know I've said this a few times, it sounds really lame, but like pavements, like the pavements are so well surfaced that you're never like tripping over stuff and like struggling with your suitcase. Korea, my arms are killing me because I had to lift my bags up so much and like upstairs, like it's the airport train. So you've got it when, look, I understand. In Tokyo, some places only had stairs and didn't have escalators or elevators, but they weren't on airport lines. You're one, so the only train lines that collect, collect, because to be fair in Japan, like 90 connect to the train station, but the, only two train lines that connect from the airport to the city are the All Stop and the Express, which I got. And they both land at that platform, which has escalators for some of it, but not all of it. And then to change, you've got to use cases. So everyone that's traveling has to walk upstairs with a case. And like, I'm a weak little twink. Like look at my arms, like there's not a whole lot of muscle here. And like my case is only like 20 kilos. But only 20 kilos for a twink that's not lifted away, it's in the life. Like, I don't do that. Like, that's just not, I don't, I don't lift weights. But like, in all seriousness, like, I'm not that physically fit. And it's a joke to keep having stairs, especially because it's like, it's not like I'm just exploring and I'm in a random area and I'm trying to do it. I mean, the airport line, like, this, in my eyes, is like, what it should be. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of 
kind of like the place to put it. But anyway, that's just my overall thoughts. I kind of feel like I quite like Korea as a whole, like in lots of ways, but I think I was spoiled by Japan. I was very much spoiled by Japan, the way they treat one another, the way it all flows. My Airbnb wasn't as nice as this place, although this place is nice in terms of I've got a lot of space and a lot of facilities, but it's done very cheaply. Like you can see the like um, cupboards starting to peel on like, for example, this one isn't hung correctly and that's kind of my bad because I didn't do it quite right and like it's kind of messy in there and they've got towels drying and well not, they've got bedding towels trying dry and you want to have towels drying but like like it's all Ikea furniture and Ikea like thing and Ikea lap tables like and that's fine like don't get me wrong that's completely fine like but it's it's just not like the best I am excited for tomorrow but I do you think that like, this is what I was thinking, I'm really thinking of doing a semester abroad because I've got a few friends in Hong Kong doing a semester abroad and they're really loving it and like extended it because they want to stay longer and after this trip I was like I could totally do that and I could totally see myself doing it in Tokyo even though I thought oh, do I want to because it's just everyone treats you really well and all this and I'd, I know I could pick up the language not like that but like I could pick it up gradually decent amount but I kind of feel like so far the infrastructure in Korea isn't killing it. And like, I already saw that with like the trains when I was looking public transport from when I was in Australia, like looking between places. It was just like, didn't flow quite like how it should and took like longer than it really ought to and just, it wasn't quite a vibe. So it's not a city I can imagine myself living in. But I do think I'm excited to be in Seoul and just see it because I've always wanted to come to Seoul. I remember being eight years old in England, wanting to go to South Korea and never thinking there was any chance in my life I would ever go to South Korea, let alone alone, let alone alone. But so I'm really excited to do it. But I, and I think I'm going to really enjoy Korea, but I think I'm not going to get from it what I got from Japan. Also, Japan was my first time traveling alone, so it was like, a bit more like new it's like the first time you do first time you do like anything you do every time the first time you do it is better but like this just isn't it like this just like right now i need to wash my hands like just take some stuff out of my thing so i can like plug my phone in and stuff and eat but i'm not like wanting to explore whereas like even after my like a nine hour flight and me getting like fucked up trying to get to my hotel and getting stressed out my hotel because I couldn't do it right I really really wanted to like not really really wanted to but like on the streets I kind of wanted to have a look around it seemed really cute and nice and fresh and fun I'm kind of not like that with Korea I'm kind of like disinterested like love you so much Korea but like I don't know maybe my taste will change I'm not I'm not entirely sure but so far I'm not living you know what I mean okay so I'm officially confused Basically, with this accommodation, the building's really nice, and the shell is all good, but they finished it pretty cheaply. But you've literally just got, like, screens, and you can, like, turn the lights on. But then there's also a way to turn it all on and all off. But, like, that's not what it does, but I don't know what it does. And then there's, like, another switch for this, but then that's a sensor line. I mean, the bathrooms are just like normal switches, but they don't always work. So I guess you've got to have one of these on for your bathroom. I like don't really know how it works. I literally study IT and I can't figure this out. I'm an idiot. I've literally never ate Korean food in my life, and I'm in Korea. There's something going on. I don't know. I'm gonna explore the street. Can I just say it's selfie? So like I've dead has got my hood up and I'm like my hands in my pockets. I'm like, holy shit, I'm not gonna be out at night in Korea. It's gonna be a daytime city. Get up early, do it during the day. And don't come out at night. It's gonna be my vibe in Korea. Okay, it's literally so cold, I just wanna eat whatever and go back into my hotel. It's crazy. I'm really craving Mexican, this is not good. And KFC. I think I'm literally just used to Japan where everything's open late at night because it's 8 o'clock and everything's closed. 
my first Japanese proper subway experience. I really am craving KFC, so I'm just gonna catch the train as close to a KFC as I can get because I'm cold. Leave me alone. Oh, so that's the thing because everyone's in the ground. I just got off at City Hall Station. I'm kind of craving KFC, but I really want to like be authentic and buy like Korean shit, but like, it's a KFC. <laughs> I think I'm gonna do KFC, yellow. I hate my life. I decided to do KFC, and the best thing is they've got these different things that you can do in English. God, I can't talk, I'm tired. Um, so that's good, because then I have to like, try to talk to people a lot. Okay, so like, everything was still in Korean, really. I've ordered quite a lot. I've ordered like a chicken tenders and a lot of spicy bell ones, and a zinger burger, and a kid's skin. And the water, uh, so, honestly, this is going to be a trend. Okay, so I thought I'd order quite a lot of food, but I guess I didn't. But anyway, still, like, Korean curves, you look fun. Listen to Cola by Camel Fat. And if you know that song, it's like such a bob to walk around a city, too. Like, she takes a different one. Oh, shit, go. Oh, shit, go. I'm so excited. Love this. Okay, that's nice and warm. Oh fuck, there's still 28 seconds left. Let's cross while I can. Okay, but it's actually become my favorite pastime while traveling to listen to music at night and walk around. And I didn't think I'd get to do that in Korea because it's so fucking cold. And it is, but if I just listen to Faded by Shu, then I can look at some temples and have a wander and go to some markets. And it motivates me. How cute. My first Korean temple. Very beautiful. How gorgeous is this temple? Love it. I'm actually glad I've wandered around and not fussed out of it. It's very pretty. Not Tokyo pretty. Korea pretty. And that's okay. Okay, so I think these markets are closed. It's only like nine o'clock though. Which is weird. I was just like, oh my god, my watch on the soul and I'm like, no, I didn't put it back on. Um and I kind of thought they'd still be open because they would be in Tokyo. Even though it's like a Tuesday night because they never close in Tokyo, pretty much. Crazy. I mean, there's some stuff open, but not a whole lot. Um, yeah, especially because this is like the biggest markets in Tokyo, like one of the best ones, which is weird. Okay, so I've ended up doing like a complete lab. There was some like meat for sale, but I don't really want to buy like street food meat full stop, let alone like after I've ate, um, it's kind of cute. Um, but so I'd, I caught the train here. I walked a little bit and then caught the train here. But I think I'm gonna do full loop of Myeong, Dong, and it will just mean that then I've seen some more of Seoul. I've kind of done Myeong Dong then. I've at least seen it, so it's like less stressful, which was good. You know, that's always good. I'm kind of cold and I kind of want to get a pumpkin spice latte. But then it's like 9.30 at night and that's like the worst time to get like pumpkin spice latte. How cute! No, I love Korea again. I just had a bad air bike experience or more. And on the what? They literally, the drivers, you're like halfway on the fucking pedestrian cross and they just go. Like it's actually insane. Like, oh my god, they don't even do that in fucking Paris. And Paris is like the queen of that kind of thing. Okay, look, I'm getting to a bit more of a busy area. Like, even still, it's not very busy because it's so fucking cold that no one's out. Honestly, though, if I didn't have my jumper with my hoodie that I could wear under my coat, I wouldn't be out right now. And I really wish I'd put warm my Burberry scarf, but I didn't want people to, like, mug me because they saw me in a Burberry scarf. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, real talk, like, I'm not even going to lie. I know I was safe in Japan because it was so busy and there's a security in numbers. But there's places here where I've been the only person walking down the street, so I'm like, eh, I've got to be a bit more careful. There's just like no crossing somewhere. Places look like it's. You know what I was saying earlier about how like everyone's downstairs, like in the underground, because like it's so cold upstairs. It's kind of weird because I think this is literally it, because it just said underground shopping centre. Oh no, there's no one here either. Um, and I was like, oh, that makes sense. How weird is it that they have such an extensive underground network? Iconic, but like, oh my god, look at this during the day. Why do they, they don't even need all this, do they? I guess for space, but 
Surely it costs a fuck to undecorate. Um, underground shit like this. Oh my god. This is crazy. Like no one here. Okay, Korea. Love that. But literally, like, look at this. It's like empty markets. And I guess it's nine o'clock on a Tuesday night, which would be normal for Australia. But like, in my eyes, this is like the CBD of Korea, which is weird. I had to come to Starbucks because I'm a basic bitch. And they have a special holiday hot chocolate. I don't know why I just. It's literally a terrible with that sign. I'm listening to the shallows and drinking my Starbucks hot chocolate and salt. Like, what a gay guy. Okay, so it looks kind of weird. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I asked if they had almond milk and she didn't know what the hell I want. That was asking for. And then she's like, soy milk? And I was like, sure, soy milk. Um, yeah. They're just gone for ordinary milk, but I don't really like to drink cow's milk. It's nice though. The holiday milk chocolate. What a winter warmer. Okay, so that hurts my soul a little bit. I'm so used to Japan where you can't have fake anything. And then this store's just not even trying to hide their entire fake warehouse down there. That's crazy to me. I guess I'm a Myeongdong now. I was just going to walk past this street too. But like that makes me so sad because I'm so used to only authentic designer stuff, which is like such a nice thing. And everything's fake down here. Bad looks in it. And that's just a while. Wow. I kind of want to have Kendall a fake Supreme bag just for the lols, but I can't even do that. It's a joke. I love how they do this in Japan and Korea. They show you what it's going to look like. And obviously it's not like really what it's going to look like because it's like you know, obviously can't eat the stuff in there but like it's a good indication of what it's going to be like some of these shops are so cute sorry I love how like busy it is because I was thinking that it wasn't oh, Tony Moly that's where I need to buy like some hand cream from and some gifts from Maddie and stuff oh my god yes this is what I wanted give it to Mimi Young Dong Food house. Me drinking my Starbucks. I'm not gonna buy any of this kind of stuff right now. Because I don't really want to carry it. The mouth is just balls, like, like why would you drive down this fucking road? It's so rude. It amazes me. Like this is not a street to drive down, clearly. Like, I get it, you wanna drive down here, but you can't. I want to be Uniqlo. Love that. Taurus. 10% off and tax free. So you never see that in Japan. See, this is what I wanted. Oh, fake Burberry. I can't handle all the fake shit. See, this is what I wanted. And I went to the other street expecting this. And it like wasn't busy at all. I'm glad I'm staying in Myeongdong now. Tony Molly, I really do need to buy some Tony Molly. I just can't be bothered right now. Okay, literally, this is what I was wanting. Korean street food. But I'm not, like, I'd have to really watch them and know that I think what they're doing is like food, health, and safety, okay? But like, look at this street. Yes, it's bussing. It's like somewhere in Tokyo and I've got my got my Starbucks to walk through it. How, how I can't it? All this fake shit, like I actually can't handle that. This is very cute. Look at this. Like an um, overwhelming amount of these food stalls. I like didn't realize me on Dong. I was missing all this. I was like, why isn't it busy? It's got the weirdest layout. But like, there's so many of these like, like another whole avenue, and there's stuff down there and stuff down there. Like, there's so many of them. Like, oh, holy, holy hell! Look at this. I got it. I mean, I don't eat seafood and I refuse to eat meat from like a stall, but oh my god, there's literally so many of these. It's insane. You could literally eat a different one every day for like four weeks. Chocolate banana crepe. Ooh. I'll probably get one of those at some point. Korean pancake? 
I'm like literally still never eaten Korean food when I'm in Korea. That's quite funny to me. I think I've decided what I'll eat here next time I come. I'm gonna have some chocolate dipped strawberries or some strawberry mochi. Oh, there's another Lush. My trip has been haunted. You can't even see. My trip has been haunted by Lush. It's not a problem, but it is. Okay, I've heard of the face shop from HRH Collection. Apparently they do like the best cushion foundation ever, but I don't wear makeup anymore, so. What's the best corn on a stick? And then there's also one that does sweet potato. So I feel like I can have a variety of things without eating meat. Also like, as a, as a vegan TM, um, I want to try to eat less meat if possible. So cute. Okay, I think I've come to the end of these rows now. Ooh, Milky Bee premium ice cream. I'll have that some other day. I need to really look where I'm going. I've had enough for Wanda now. I need to go to bed. <laughs> well, I'm really tired. But oh well. I've grown an affection for Myeongdong and Korea as a whole, which is always good. These fake shops really ain't it though, sis. Like, honestly, Sol, you'd be like 900 times better without all the fake Supreme. Also, did anyone even care about Supreme now that the Louis Vuitton collaboration is over? Like, no. No one cares. It's like a streetwear brand no one cares about. Oh, look, another Starbucks. I'm such a basic fucking bitch. Drinking fucking Starbucks. Oh well. There's like a shocking amount of this all over the streets. I don't know, it's because they've closed now. So it's like, to be picked up now. But it's like, amazes me quite a lot because like Tokyo would like, let there be a couple of bags, 10 minutes for pickup and Seoul just doesn't give a shit. Like they're actually like, Seoul is just like, trash, we can have it all everywhere. Like it's not a problem. It's always a trip seeing petrol station in the middle of a city. So you almost don't believe that Australia does. How is their tourism bureau? I just have a lot to say about this. Like, I understand it's the most convenient way of doing it, but like, it really is a deterrent for a lot of people to see. I guess that's like a clubbing avenue or something. Um, but I just think that's like such a deterrent towards people feel like it's a nice, clean, lovely, gorgeous, beautiful neighborhood. Like, it's all just very like junky, Korea. I do like it a lot more than I used to. But like, it's no Korea. <laughs> it's no Japan. Korea is no Japan. It's the words I was trying to get out there. Like, it was very cute. I don't know, my friend was like, I'd be so drunk if I was taking a shot every time he said cute, which is true. But like, it's cute, but it's like very like, disorganized. Do you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't feel like one person had a cohesive design theme, whereas Tokyo feels like they sat down and planned shit out, whereas here it just happened, you know what I mean? Okay, that's what I'm sure you have your blue dog. So you put your hand against her, he says. And then... It's kind of cool. And you've got a welcome line. Okay, so I've cleaned up a lot of that. Tidied, got everything out of the way. All unpacked. And it feels like so much better than my, um... Tokyo accommodation. To be fair, it's like double the size, but still, like, I've like not got too too much on there because I don't really. I brought a lot of stuff with me, but not really that that much. But it's just like really nice to kind of have a place for everything, and I'm not living out of like a suitcase, even though like I'm only in Seoul for like five nights. But it's nice that I know that I'm not like here too much, like too stressed out. And I'm wearing my kimono though, which like what a vibe. I mean, love that, honestly. I'm like, love you, love my kimono. My dad was like, when are you gonna wear that? And I was like, every day around the house. You know what you meant to, to be fair? You meant to like wear them for special occasions. But like, I'm just treating it like a bit of a robe. And then I went about like a proper robe in Hong Kong. That's my thing though, like with my trip, I've kind of like got it in my head where it's like, um. I've, I've got like things that I want from each place and that's been my biggest thing since I've gotten into like this whole minimalism gig. I'm nothing close to a minimalist, I still keep accumulating but I don't also think minimalism is the answer because there's sometimes things you want um, but it'll be like I went to Japan and I wanted a kimono so I got a kimono. 
a look, I didn't I didn't go to Shivango and I wanted to buy a Burberry coat and a scarf, but I had been looking at a Burberry coat and a scarf a few times in the last couple of months and they were just such a good price I couldn't pass it up. Um but like I didn't buy myself one souvenir from Tokyo. I bought a few other people's souvenirs, but I didn't buy myself one. Because I don't value souvenirs, but I have friends that do. And then here in Seoul, I don't want a souvenir from Seoul. The only things I want from Seoul is I'm going to get my eyebrows tattooed, um, and that'll be my souvenir. And then I want to buy some Tony, Tony Moly, um, like some hand cream and some lip balm and some, like, three things probably from Tony Moly, and I'll buy a few other people things. There's nothing else I want from Korea. So, like, in Tokyo, I pretty much only bought my kimono. And I bought a few other things. Like, I bought, like, some socks at Uniqlo, but it was nothing too deep. But, like, I'm not just accumulating stuff every stop. And that's really quite nice. Like, I mean, I mean, Tokyo's my worst stop because I did buy my coat. But I'm planning in Seoul to literally physical things I buy that are adding to my possessions not to like people that I'm buying for that I know love Korean skincare or whatever like a Tony Molly hand cream and like a lip balm or something like some or some Korean skincare something cute but like I don't need like like chachkis you know what I mean and then Hong Kong I want to get like a silk robe kind of like this but like my parents bought them when they were in Hong Kong like 20 years ago um, I was that being 20 years, I'm only like 19, but, um, and they've still got them now, so I wonder about like a silk robe, because I love wearing this kind of stuff like just around the house, I don't really wear pyjamas, um, I either wear like jogging bottoms or like my underwear and like a large shirt, but I kind of like this kind of vibe, and I don't really wear my dressing gown too much, because it's not really my thing, but kimonos kind of are, and honestly I feel like a robe would be too. So that's all I plan to buy in Hong Kong. That, that's the only thing I want from Hong Kong. Singapore. There's not one thing I want from Singapore. And there's not one thing I want from Bali. So, I'm not saying I'm not going to buy anything. Because I'm sure I'll buy some stuff. And I have plenty of disposable income. So I have the ability to. And I'll obviously be buying people presents. If I know that it's something they want. But like, I myself... All I plan to accumulate. I don't want to come back from this trip with like excess. I remember when I was packing and I took one case, my family was like, You want to take your one case with you? And I was like, I thought one case was excessive to be honest for a month, and I still do. But they were like, You know, I can take more. And they're like, Are you going to come back with so much more? And I always used to in the UK and went out on trips, but like, I don't want to do that. Like, I look, I walk through markets and I'm like, Oh, that's so cheap. It's not a reason to buy it. Like, I'm happy with the things I own now and like stuff you can because that's the thing when you really look at what I buy it's pretty much only things that I can only get in that place and it isn't just like tourist clutter like a kimono the place to buy a kimono is Tokyo or Japan it's probably not Tokyo it's just Japan as a whole so I bought one in Japan and like honestly Burberry stuff is probably Japan too, they have the best second-hand resale market and like South Korea is the place to buy like South Korean skincare obviously and like Tony Moly which is what I want and Hong Kong is the place to buy like robes and that kind of stuff like China is good for that kind of thing so like all the stuff I'm buying is because they're really known for it, it's not that I'm buying like look I'm not being shady here and I'm gonna buy your snow globe, I love you so much but it's not like I'm buying a snow globe which is like mass produced clutter, like it's like things that I know and want and use that I can only get in that specific place so it makes sense to accumulate in a way if you know what I mean like purposeful accumulation which I feel like is a much better way of doing it but anyway I'm excited for tomorrow to explore Seoul a bit more because I'm I've warmed Seoul a little bit more now it's not quite Tokyo but it's still a very cool city and I'm excited to see Gangnam and all that so anyway, good night, day seven. God, I'm really behind on my vlogs. I've got to vlog, I've got to edit like a few now. I really need to do it, but like, I'm tired and I need to wash my face and all that. So, fun. Anyway, night kids.